Welcome to Rooster Radio, a broadcast dedicated to supporting and promoting local artists in the Gaston County and surrounding areas. That was the best sandwich I've ever ate in my life. And you know what? I'm glad I called them when I did because they closed at 11. They closed at 11 today. Oh shit! <laughs> right in time. What kind of life right? is that? Like you, you, you got to get up on Saturday mornings and make breakfast and close at 11, and like you can't do shit on a well, Saturday. They usually, like if you got to get up that early yeah, and do yeah. breakfast. Well, they usually stay open longer, but they were closing early today because of the holiday. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. There's going to be a bunch of kids in downtown. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, because that just they had the, everything barricaded mm-hmm. off in front of the museum. Concord's doing something. Uh, what everybody's saying? Something about a bunny run or some shit? I'm like, I don't care unless it's a bunch of half-naked women in bunny ears running no. down Bears <laughs> Avenue. I really don't care. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah, I, I worked, you know, once upon a time I worked in restaurants. I worked for a bunch of different places, you know, and... You, family restaurants were always the worst, mm. the, the absolute worst. Like I don't know what it is about people that take their kids out to eat. Like <laughs> they're they're on their worst mm-hmm. fucking yeah. behavior, man. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. shit right on the floor. It's like they shoved them full of sugar and just let them yeah. loose. Yeah. Throw biscuits and shit all Literally. over the carpet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just sucking down sodas and yeah. like just yeah. And then like so, like they're toward the end. Like I got out of it and like. I don't know, it was like the late 2000s, early mid 2000s or whatever. And uh, that was like when people were starting to like show up to restaurants with like their little devices and stuff. Their Mm -hmm. kids would have, and like just the way some of these kids would talk to their parents in front of complete strangers. I'm sitting there trying to take an order and like kids are just basically cussing their parents out, just telling them what to do, like little dictators. I'm just like, Little dicks. <laughs> There's one on YouTube of a, like a little four-year-old boy throwing shit at his grandma, like throwing up gang signs. Like you, you have any idea like, how bro. hard? I will snatch your soul <laughs> from your <laughs> body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I'm not. I don't advocate beating kids or nothing, but kids, some kids do <laughs> need to be smacked. Yeah. That I shit mean, wouldn't work in my house. Like, yeah, I mean, my dad, I, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. We're going to roll that back to the parents because they probably need their ass Well, I knew the <laughs> principle of, like, don't make me take you to the bathroom. Yeah. Because then that meant you were about to get your ass wore out. So it was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> or if we're in a store, it was like, you want to go to the car? Yep, yep. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, your, did, did you have a mom? Months. Did your mom say, wait till your dad gets home? That was that was my mom's. Like, wait till your yeah, dad well, gets home. No, my mom handled it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my mom couldn't. My mom was like literally four foot seven. Home. Yeah. So by the time like I was maybe six, I was two. already bigger than her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, my dad had one of them uh, leather cross-stitch belts. Mm. Motherfucker would leave a whelp on your backside. <laughs> look like a big dick done smacked you in the back of the leg or something. Well, mama would yeah. come after yeah. me, though, because she was so small, she had to compensate. So she broke a wooden spoon over my ass. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, I'm going to get you. i got to make it hurt. I had a, one of my neighbors, his dad would make him go get a switch. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Yes. That, that was I used The worst switch yeah. for <laughs> Scythia bush. The, the bushes that come out with the yellow thing, because they, they grow just... That's I a had switch those, bush. Yeah. That's what we called it. It was a switch bush. I had plenty of those damn wooden spoon tattoos too, growing up. <laughs> I mean, and look, man, I you know, it, we're we're just it's a different time. We've evolved. Like you yeah. can't you can't yeah. do that no more. But it doesn't work for you. Some should kids. Some kids smack your kids sometimes. Like if they're <laughs> acting like that in public, yeah. You speak my thought now. Yeah, right. yeah. If you got a little Cartman on your hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you should smack that motherfucker. That's all I'm saying. That's just saying. That's a, just a little reminder every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> Parenting one on one. That's pretty. That's a pretty good run, right? None of us have kids. Yeah. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Uh, man, um, I guess uh, I guess the appropriate thing to do would be to introduce everybody. We're talking to Fifty Flies today. If you guys want to look at the camera there, introduce yourself. Say uh, what you do in the band. Well, this one. Uh, <laughs> it's three hundred and sixty. Look yeah. at all of them, Tim. <laughs> this one. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> Chip Berenger drums. <laughs> uh, Andrew Irwin guitar. Austin Symbolisti guitar. Javier Villalobos bass. Kevin Reynolds vocals. Right, and uh, you guys are good friends of the Rooster. We love you here. You've played a few times here. Uh, you got a show coming up. Um, you're going to be performing at Rooster Olympics. Oh, yeah. So thank you yep. for that, all of you. Um, since we've opened, we're almost a year and a half in now. Um, you know, and yes, we've we've gotten developed relationships with certain artists and bands, people that have been super supportive. And uh, before we say anything, deep dig into this, I just want to say thank you for all of your support. You know, I, without guys like you, without bands like yours, like we we probably wouldn't have made it this far. Spreading the good word, telling it's not just fans; it's other bands, it's you know friends and family. You know, anytime you guys play, you you always bring people with you, and mm -hmm. you just, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. So thank you first and foremost. Uh -huh. Thank you for like, giving absolutely. us a to play. For yeah, real. exactly. I mean, you yeah. guys are a huge supporter of us. I mean, you offer an outstanding place for people to hang out and listen to good music. So we appreciate y'all as well. Right on. Absolutely. And you guys drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I always appreciate, that. <laughs> I always appreciate that when the band support the bar. I'll, I'll drink to that. Yeah. <laughs> what was it that our fans like drank you out of one night? Uh, Fireball. Fireball. Oh, no, 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 Jack. It was, was Jack, it Jack Daniels. Daniels. <laughs> it was Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that might have been y'all's first time here. Yeah. Uh, that was cutthroat. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, Oop. Oops. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, yeah, y'all drank us out of Jack the first time you're here. I think uh, y'all were here with um, uh, AYMB was th there that night because I know a couple of those guys were responsible for most of that Jack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and right. Chip's tried to drink us out of Fireball, but I'm, I know better. I, I, I know <laughs> when Chip's coming, I, they got, yeah, I stopped. Well, I came really in here one night. We had just got done playing, and we were – uh, waiting to leave and chips in here drinking. Apparently, he made a discovery. I didn't even know y'all had champagne, but of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, uh, mimosas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I first opened, I didn't have any wine or anything like that, and um, you know, I, because we booked so many different types of shows, right? Like, you know, we at, when we first opened, we were doing jazz and blues and all kinds of stuff, and there's certain crowds that that like certain shit, right? Like, yep. we have crowds that are beer crowds. And we have crowds that are liquor crowds, but some of these types of music kind of lend themselves to wine drinkers. And so I started carrying wine, but when I, when I talked to the distributor, I was like, I want one of each. <laughs> I'm not trying to be like a big wine seller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I am surprised at how much wine is actually sold. Because yeah. there'll be some shows and I'll see somebody order wine and everybody else is drinking liquor and beer. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> we make like, just to keep it classy. Yeah, I guess. Classy. Well, Maybe what I'm the type of shows cup. we play, but it's hard for me to picture a wine tasting going on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is like I, we don't do glass, right? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't carry glassware for a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, you know, number one is is safety. Like, like that's the yep. quickest way for somebody to, to get that wants to start something to, to fuck somebody up is mm. bust some glass on their yeah, head. Yeah. Uh, number two <laughs> is you know. Keep, you know, people are gonna people spill shit all the time, and yeah. last thing I want to do is spend half my night cleaning up broken glass and then some, you know, worry yeah. about somebody falling or stepping on it. And then there's the cost involved in keeping up glass wearing mm -hmm. and stuff. It, so it just made more sense to do all plastic. But what's funny is pouring a glass of wine in, in, in a plastic, plastic glass. glass. <laughs> that's, that's just, that is the funniest thing. Roadhouse. I feel like a real winner. It's like, you go swirl it in the plastic yeah. cup. Yeah. <laughs> I've even considered getting like some plastic wine cups. And I'm like, no, like, no. It's just better. <laughs> Don't to be, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to sell this in the first place. So. <laughs> <laughs> but oddly enough, we've got a girls' night out show coming up uh, Mother's Day weekend, and I'm going to have our wine rep here tasting wine at the at the girls' night out show. Okay. So that'll nice. be fun. You hear that, ladies? Tickets for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you're single, it's not a bad I'm idea. I'm not single. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because li listen to what he's about yeah, to say. Yeah, I'm okay. going to tell you right now. Just picture this: a hundred horny. Single women screaming, hooting, hollering, drinking. Five dollar lamb beef. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like you know, like are you like is it is it gay or is it more gay to not come? Well, are you just, right? sit, yeah, yeah. just sit back and watch the way and know. just pick yeah, yeah. whatever one you want? Change. My mind. How much are <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For you, no, why do you care? I mean, <laughs> you, you're happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a happily married man. My wife and I worked the bar last year when we did that show, 
And uh, it was, I mean, it was a fun vibe, you know? It was like, his observation. He was like, dude, this is like a golden opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could clean up. You could yeah. clean up, man. Wow. But, um, <laughs> so maybe there's an aspect of that you can add to your shows, Kevin. <laughs> you just a magic mic there, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people would pay me to keep my clothes on. <laughs> tip jar in front of the stage. Yeah, say, put a tip bucket out. The, yeah. the more this gets full, the more my clothes stay on. <laughs> I will. I'll put something in there. I got a bad view of that. Dude. <laughs> you got an ass view of that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Have a little sign on the bucket that says ten dollars to take it off, twenty yeah. to keep it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first take a shirt off at all, but yeah. <laughs> it, did put, it, did put, it did put fifty dollars free bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But um, but not nah, you guys. I want to talk about the new single. You just recently dropped a new single called Devil. It's a banger of a fucking song. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, the 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 strategy, like the thought process, putting you know. Who came, whose idea was it? Like, who came up with the riff? Like, t- talk about Devil, because it is a really good song. So, some of your best work. Thank you. um, well, I wrote the lyrics. Um, I had the chorus before anything. Um, it was kind of one of those things I couldn't sleep one night. I was up at like three o'clock in the morning, just chilling in my living room. And I don't know, the lyric kind of popped into my head. So, I started working on it and, and got the chorus solid. And we went into the studio. I kind of put it on the back burner for a while. And uh, we went into the studio to actually work on a different song, but then we decided to kind of do something fresh and start over, and it became Devil. And uh, the verses, I wrote the chorus 100% by myself, but the verses were kind of a collaboration between me and then uh, Sam Oakletree and Jordan Matachion from Pangea Creative Group, Mm -hmm. um, who we recorded through. And they're kind of the ones that helped us see the vision through, if that makes any sense. Uh, The rest of you guys, when you're writing the music to this song, like, are you you aware when you're writing it, like, this is... A fucking hit like like could you tell that this was going to be special well i think for uh for devil like i said uh it kind of grew in the studio so for that particular one we saw it grow like we could hear it very loud and clear as the guitars layered and drums came in bass came in everybody you know and then finally the vocals really are the last key to it that really we were listening to and was like man this is this is going to be one of the best ones we put out um, but as far as like when we write just in the garage or wherever, that just comes together real fast. Mm-hmm. And we immediately feel like everybody dropping in. And it was just a different way to listen to it in the studio than yeah. just just everybody just piling on like we do in the garage. Um, but either way, you know, at the end of the day, when you leave the leave the studio or the practice space, you know if it's good or not. You feel it right off the bat. Um, but in the garage, we just run through it, run through it, run through it, and typically, yeah, we can feel if we're going to trash it or if we're going to keep rolling with it pretty quick. <laughs> As this one started to come together, though, it, it really did feel like it had some magic to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, we just felt like it was kind of a, a little bit of a different direction than a lot of stuff that we had taken before, and it was just kind of unique. And uh, so, you know, I, I felt really confident in it pretty early on and thought it was going to be a really good one and I mean you know the results so far have been really good I'd say also uh considering like this this is the first song that I've actually been able to collaborate with 50 flies um it, it's it's been awesome uh like the aggression in the song like I know that most of the fans weren't expecting like the heaviness of the song but yeah it turned out pretty good and like I love it yeah it's Austin being good. the newest member of the band did, did you have a band before this I did uh, this band called Tonight's Entertainment. It was nothing big or anything, but this this band's definitely has been way more official. And you're enjoying this and experience a lot. It's absolutely. a little more satisfying, gratifying, absolutely. so to speak. We're yeah. rolling around a year now, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Actually, this month makes a year, and then Rooster Olympics the last year was my first show with them. So we go into the wolves on that. Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> we saw all the people yeah. running up outside. And we're like, oh shit! I've never done this before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'll say about Austin, man, is, is and, I, and I think he's done this, you know, subconsciously and not really even knowing that he's done it, but he's brought this thoroughness to our band. And, and so where we used to practice really heavy and then, you know, take cover songs, for instance, if we say, okay, guys, here's two cover songs. Everybody needs to go home and learn this, <laughs> and next practice we'll throw down. We would do that and never, it never happened. 
we do it again, it never happened. Yeah, if anybody's listening, so, we've only ever played one cover song. So now, yeah. even though we practice a bunch of them. So now we can even be talking about two or three, and Austin comes back next week and says, I got my parts, everybody ready? Yeah. I mean, nice. And we're usually like, oh, shit. Yeah. So, so you're keeping them together, huh? I try. Austin, yeah. Austin yeah. has incredible initiative, man, and just drive, and I think he doesn't even know how he's kind of refocused us and put us on the track. You know? That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. So that's, that's actually Writing Devil, too. <coughs> writing Devil, he was a big part of uh, mm-hmm. pushing that to the next level as well, adding that extra layer for us. Yeah. That breakdown there and stuff. And then yeah. getting on everybody's ass, too. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so are you saying that it's you're been the three mom? Weeks <laughs> and, uh, we haven't gotten to <laughs> the studio maybe. yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Something again? needs to happen. <laughs> You don't typically hear that with the youngest member. Yeah. <laughs> hey, watch so, out. He's going to get him a leather cross-stitch belt. So, Austin, is that, I mean, is, is that just a, a drive? You're, you're just, your passion for doing this. You, Absolutely. You want to you wanna put on the best show possible. You, for, and you feel like you've got this new new family now. And, and Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'd say I need to pick up a bit of my uh, live performance, move around the stage a bit more. But, I mean, it all comes with time. Well, and most places don't give you room to move. Yeah, yeah that's very that true. true. Yeah, Some <laughs> stages are definitely bigger than others. But, I mean, this is a decent size stage. I mean, yeah, you can move around here yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I've, it's, it's been great. And It's coming together. It yeah. just comes with experience and time. I <laughs> do. <laughs> going to ask the legacy question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> nah, so, um, have, have you done Devil Live yet? Nope. Done no, no. Okay, so you can see Devil perform live right here at the Rooster. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, sure at can. Rooster Olympics on May 25th. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting really excited about Rooster. Can we talk about the Rooster Olympics for a minute? Y'all yeah, cool with yeah, that? Yeah. So, um, so for those who don't know, Rooster Olympics, is this will be our second annual. It's a fundraiser. We'll raise money for Webb Street School. Webb Street School is um, it's one of the schools here in Gaston County, but it's specifically for individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities. So all of the students there have some sort of disability that they struggle with that keeps them from being able to kind of keep up in, you know, like, like uh, you know, other schools. Yeah. So um, my son went there. He, he went through the program there, and I've said this before a lot. Like, without that school, I never would have been able to have a career. Like, you know, having having a place for him to go and and you know he, he whatever skills he was going to develop he was able to develop them there the staff there is amazing the teachers the faculty uh, even the bus drivers just cool That's as awesome, shit man yeah. the great people and so even though my son's not there anymore that place is really close to my heart so when i opened up i decided we're going to do this once a year fundraiser to help him out last year we were able to raise seven thousand dollars for the school, and it put them over the hump. They were they were trying to buy this equipment for their gym, this interactive stuff. Like some of these kids were like Down syndrome and stuff. You got to make them active. Like, yeah, like one of the yeah. one of the things pretty common place with people with Down syndrome, they tend to get really overweight and they you know mm-hmm. eat too much. But with this the program at the school, they keep them active to try to kind of keep them in better shape. You know, healthy mind, healthy body, all that stuff. So this interactive equipment is going to make it a whole lot easier for that staff to get them going, okay. and. Um, and so this year, you know, they've got a they've got a garden there, an aqua garden there. Okay. Um, they, they, they teach kids skills. You know, so, some of these skills can go out into some of these kids can go out into the public and, and function and have jobs. Mm-hmm. Others cannot. Mm-hmm. But this they, they have a pool there that so for water therapy. It's, it's just an amazing oh, place. Awesome. Yeah. So so after the success of last year. You know, of course, we're going to do it again this year, and we're really excited. It's going to be Saturday, May 25th. We're going to have games. Uh, this year, the games will be better. So if, if you were thinking about it, so, well, I look, look I, you know, I didn't do it all myself last year. I had a lot of help, you know, Ariel, my staff, and all that. But planning it, I kind of planned it all pretty much myself, and it was too much. It was too much yeah. for me to do yeah. and not have, like, people in place that I could trust. I mean, you were still new. Yeah, at the time, so you know, they, you know, Ariel. Now, like, I don't even have to worry about the Misfit Market stuff anymore. Like, that's that's her baby, right? And yep. and so, so this year we've got these balls. Our, our buddy Jimmy, he's a drummer. <laughs> he has a company where they make uh, they make uh, like pong balls, like like yeah. like ping yeah. pong balls for beer yeah. pong. And I think they do golf balls too. Yeah, he does golf balls. Yeah, and their whole their whole thing. The reason they're called these balls is is to raise awareness for like nut cancer, right? Oh, okay. Like that, okay. that that's the you know it's it's supposed to be funny and silly, but they're really trying to raise money. Yeah. So he's he's one of the regulars here at our open mic, and he him and I got to talking, and now him and his partner are going to manage.
the game section. So we actually have like oh, cool. somebody oh, wow. taking the helm. So like if you want to play cornhole, if you want to play beer pong, you know, um, we'll probably do the rock paper scissor thing again. Are y'all doing you know, pencil fighting? I, I, I thought about just. <laughs> <laughs> your chance. I mean, we can. If, if enough people sign up, we will. Like I just last year, I got so stoked on the pencil fighting thing because I had like that's what I used to do on the school bus. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so it was really fun. But if enough people sign up, yes, we will. Um, so we've got someone to manage the games. We've got the Misfit Market. We've got, what, 20 vendors? Something like that? 20 to 24 is what we yeah. can fit in. Yeah. And I want to put this in here real quick. If you're interested in, in bending, your fee is a straight donation to Web Street School. So Correct. So you can email me. And we'll get you in there. Yeah, and, and I'm happy to say that we've, we've, we've been able to get some sponsors this year to kind of help offset the cost of the outside production. You know, it's not easy, it's not cheap to put a big stage yeah, with sound yeah. and light. Yeah, you got to yeah, have power sure. out there, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So that's what we're using sponsorship money for so that we can actually raise money for the school. So like last year, for example, if we didn't have sponsors – Instead of seven thousand dollars, we would have written a check to the school for like twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like that's that's you know yeah. that's a big deal. So thank you to all those that are sponsored. And I say all that to not just to promote the show, but Fifty Fives will be performing yes. oh, yeah. at the Rooster Olympics, and I'm very very excited about oh, we this. We are one. too, man. Yeah, we're all stoked about it. It's gonna be a good time and for a good cause. So I mean, it was fun last that. year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've had more practice. So do it at first. Austin was supposed to be out of town, but he ended up pushing some stuff back so we could we could be mm -hmm. here for the show. Originally, we had to turn it down because we didn't think we'd have everybody, but when we found out we would, we were just like, absolutely, let's jump on this. Yeah. Have you guys um, – do you have any kind of, like, plan or, or do you have any kind of thought about how you want to approach, like – how many shows you play a year, like where all you want to play. I mean, you, you know, it's five piece. You all got families, old ladies, yeah. kids, all that stuff. Um, do you have any kind of, uh, do you want to get outside of the Charlotte market? Like, do you want to get more uh, on more stages? Yeah. Like what's the philosophy there? I'd say we definitely want to, but it's also, we work Monday through Friday mainly. So it's hard to get a, yeah. a row of shows outside of Charlotte when we only got a two day span to, to do so but we would love to yeah i mean we've all got careers and stuff like that but i mean this is still a focus for us as well and it's you know just as much a hobby as it is a family too like the we're all brothers so like we we enjoy spending time together and you know we definitely want to try and venture out more we've in the last you know two years been trying to get out a little bit further you know made it into south carolina Virginia, you know, stuff like that. But we want to start doing that more and maybe expand a little bit further and, I guess, you know, kind of move more towards, like, the regional um, type I mean, of atmosphere. You, you definitely have, like, that a bit. Like, you, you're, you're that good. Like, you should oh, be man, able to play that. outside of the Charlotte market. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all have a goal location, like, goal place that you would love to play? PNC. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, uh, fair. fair. Not a, too long ago, we got offered uh, some tour dates um, throughout the U.S. I think Missouri was one of them, Oklahoma, Texas. But it's just, it's the logistics of it. You know what I mean? It's like, it'd be awesome to do that, but we can't bankrupt ourselves to do that either. So there's just, there's a lot that's got to, you know, come into play. See, there's that. some mixed feelings, it sounds like. It sounds like, like all of you are kind of like, Man, that would be awesome, but you're not. No one's in that position where you're ready to just shit on your career to do it. Oh no, no. no. I, I mean, I, our goal's always been regional type, right? So that could be done, but it would be done through vacations, PTOs mm -hmm. with our jobs. Oh, that's like y'all right. like, need to base right. some PTO that's, yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Jillian and them from Forever May Fall were talking about. They, you know, they, they do the same thing. They kind of stack their vacation time yep. to kind of do yeah. like yeah. one or two runs a year. We're, we're never going to be the band that gives up careers for 20K a year if you're lucky to split yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> that's Rent that's is not a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Every month. Right. And they it. don't care if you're yeah. on tour. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just hope that you don't let you just keep doing it, even if it is, yeah. even if it does stay <clears throat> North South Carolina local, because you know you've got music that needs to be heard. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thanks, man. Talk about the name Fifty Flies. I've always wondered <laughs> what that came from. Chip, you want to cover <laughs> that? <laughs> I mean, it's Chip's Chip the only one that was like there for that. Yeah. There for that. Uh, I, were you? I that was like right before me. Okay. And it's really not that deep, so don't get all worked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, it was about my garage, basically. I mean, we lived in Midland, right? 
And uh, in the middle of the woods, and that's always been our practice spot until, you know, what? Six three, months ago? Three, yeah, four yeah. months ago. Yeah, something like that. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but no air conditioner, no anything. Oh. And we oh. practiced out there midsummer, door wide open and all that. And so we're in between songs one night back when Brandon was our, our lead man. Mm. And um, we didn't have a name. It was just three of us, I think, at that point. And uh, so Brandon backs up from the mic and he takes his hat off and he kind of wipes sweat off and he's like, dude, there's like 50 flies in here. (laughs) 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 So we're still searching in our minds like we're banging our heads against the wall for a band name and everybody's just like, it's just all right right then. (laughs) The light bulb went off. (laughs) Yeah, so it's not deep. I mean, everybody always, always seems to be looking for this. Deep, weird. Well, my you know, thing, my my thing should with the just ba- make some shit up. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah it, should, it should be some kind of demonic story <laughs> just to make it exciting. <laughs> Ooh, that nah, one time on Blood Worship Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> when I first when I first uh, when I first found out about you guys, um, you I, my I always wondered why you didn't use the number because you spell fifty out, and I, it's just dumb. I'm getting in the weeds, but. Like, is there a is there a philosophy there why you spell it out and don't use the number? The only answer I have for that is Brandon hated it, hated for somebody to use the number. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't even talk about making a sticker with a number on it. <laughs> he was he was persnickety about a few things. <laughs> well, I think that drum head that they've got hanging up over there has the number fifty on it, don't it? Yeah, it's because yeah. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm outside the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's why it's hanging on my wall. Yeah. 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 It's like, here you can have this. <laughs> I broke a rule. <laughs> Surprise. Sorry, man. Surprise. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's usual. How long did it take to grow that beard? <laughs> Dude, I was sitting here thinking that is a glorious beard. It's so yeah. shiny. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, like, now, it's like the one skill I have. We've now, <laughs> um, we've now reached the beard portion of the show. It's been, I've honestly kind of lost count. It's, I think, somewhere between two and two and a half years. Um, and it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of taken over at this point. But it gets trimmed. Like, it'd probably be longer, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it trimmed and kind of shaped up once a month. And, I mean, I, I've taken some length off at times just to kind of clean it up. I mean, at this point, it'd probably be closer to my belly button if I had are you Are you using balm or oil? So, gone through <laughs> multiple, you know, different products. Now, at this length, I just use uh, oil. Oh. Um, and I'm actually using, like, a gel-type oil now. I was using I was using oil on mine for a long time, and then uh, my wife got me like this little gift pack for mm-hmm. beard care, and it had this little bomb in. It. I started using it, and it actually holds shape better than yep. oil does. Yeah, but I don't think you have that issue now. You've got enough gravity working exactly to kind of keep it straight. <laughs> I was just sitting there going, "It's so it's so shiny," but then I was like. Well, if he shaved it off, would he look 12? <laughs> go, back, go back on the flies page. Yeah. And, like, if you go back far enough, right. you'll see Andrew. He looks like he's 12. Like, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. I, was bald, I was completely bald-headed and yeah. had no beard. So it's like a completely different person. But yeah, Just eyebrows. I mean, yeah. yeah. Much, that's, that's it. And the second thought, I was like, if he got that silk press, that thing would probably down to here. And it's nice and straight and flowy. ZZ top. Everybody always asks me if, I, if I've ever tried, like, straightening it or anything. I mean, I've got a big routine that I use like every day. I condition it. I've, uh, you know, I blow dry it, straighten it out, and everything. So it's this whole thing. But yeah, me too. I, I just care about it looking <laughs> decent. I want to be so much extra. Yeah. Like the I, so I, I had, I had the before I opened this place. I had like you know full beard on the sides, and <clears throat> I would never let it get long because yeah. it would get wily. You yep. know what I'm saying? It would just look messy. Yeah. So I just kind of kept it. And so I never like pulled the trigger on, on going long like that. And then once I opened the place and shaved the sides off, I was like, nah, this kind of suits me better. <laughs> it looks good. No, I mean, the secret to that as far as keeping the, the fro down is literally just blow drying it. That's, yeah, that's, that's what how, my barber tells me. Yep. And I'm just too impatient. See, Not I could be a dude yeah. because I would be one of those that would be so extra. I would enter those, the like the handlebar contest. <laughs> yeah. My husband thinks I'm, a, I'm nuts. I'd be like, no, I'd have like the extra curly right. shit my, going on. My barber keeps trying to talk me into going into one of those contests. <laughs> I, why not? It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. I thought about it. Yeah, Ariel, we saw you in a beard on yeah. uh, what show was oh, that? God. That oh, was yeah, Halloween. Yeah, 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 yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I had to throw away that beard because yeah. it went on Chip's nipple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm there's sorry. no coming back yeah. from that. <laughs> Savage. But it was a pretty good match to his, uh, wasn't it? Uh, it was. <laughs> you, missed, you missed a golden merch opportunity there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Chip's nipple, nipple Chip stash. Chip nipple beard. <laughs> Chip nipple. Chip, Chip nipple. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I bet you. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure you don't. Yeah. How far in before we got off the rails? Yeah. Yeah. I think we started off the rails. Yeah. 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 Look at A, man. But that was, that was like that. I've, I scared so many people because that night I walked up beside Chip. Yeah. This, is, this is one of my favorite stories. And he looks over. He goes, hey, buddy. Uh. And, then, and then he goes, what? <laughs> Smacks me across the back, and then he slowly, you can see the light bulb going off yeah. like, Michael doesn't have boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I hit you. I'm so sorry. Chip was very inebriated that night. <laughs> for, for those who are confused, <laughs> at the Halloween show, Ariel dressed up as me for Halloween. <laughs> Had the beard and everything. It was great. <laughs> Rings everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, got, you got me good. Yeah. <laughs> I scared I scared the shit out of Travis. Yeah. Yeah, because I went in the bathroom as me, came out as Michael. He I guess he was going to the bathroom or whatever. But he was right outside the door and I opened it. He's like, oh shit! Like, he was like, what the fuck? Like he backed up and almost fell into the love seat by then. It's hilarious. Oh, fantastic. It, that was like the best scare. I love scaring people. Good times. Good times. I love it. And I don't want to even dress scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, every. Um, I, I, you know what I want to do? I, we can't do it this year because we're already booked. I want to do a half Halloween party in April. Because, like, yeah, I feel like cool. you should have more than one opportunity as a grown up to dress up for something, mm -hmm. right? Now, some would argue that like there's furries in these conventions, but that shit's that shit's kind of gay. Like I want. I, I'm Why did about, you go for furries instead of a comic con? Well, I said both. I, 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 I no, you up. emphasize the furries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My daughter, my daughter keeps making fun of it. Like my daughter keeps bringing it up, and it's like fresh in my head because uh, she thinks it's hilarious, you know. Um, but like for real, like dressing up for Halloween is a lot of fun. It is. Like why do we? Why can't we? Only, why can't we do it more than once a year? It's very trendy too. So, so yeah. like ha a half Halloween party at the end of April next year. Yeah. Guys want to do that? Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah. want to head on that? Huh? <laughs> you guys could dress up and strike the tower. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you need help with costumes, you, just contact me. I'll help you. Yeah. You have to oh, lose, lose some weight, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of weight. No, no. No, because that's what make it would make it funny. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what makes it perfect. I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm gonna have to lose a shitload too. <laughs> See, that means a couple of y'all gotta get those the little suits and yeah. all. Yeah, that's gonna be hilarious. Well, lucky for me, Jeremy <laughs> yeah, only wears a hat. So oh, I'm, oh I'm yeah, he's <laughs> got know, the easiest. I'll be dying on wears a shirt now. <laughs> Wearing a suit. Yeah. yeah, you would die. Yeah, that's, that's... I don't. I, every single time, I'm like, I, I don't know how, how they do it. No. Nope. How? Uh -huh. I see bands come up there and they got like the the vest yeah. and suits. I'm like, ew. I get up there. That's all I can think is you're I'm gonna be dying. soggy. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the band, but I went and saw um I went and saw all that remains one time at neighborhood theater and one of the opening bands, they were real heavy and they all came dressed like uh in like black suits. Uh, remember Max Hedstrom? Yeah, mm -hmm. the, from the mm -hmm. eight, like the the TV character, you know, they all kind of, yeah they all kind of dress like him, and like they came out looking all serious and they went and I thought like that's kind of cool like you could say it's gimmicky but you know if this is their thing right they, yeah. they dress up in suits and, and play heavy music and if the music sucked it'd be easy to make fun of them yeah. right but they were good <laughs> yeah. they were good so it's like that's kind of cool but I just can't man oh man I so just want to be comfortable you know what I'm saying like like I even like. Here, like I could buy polo shirts for the rooster, but no. You could go to work and just now. Yeah. <laughs> jeans and a t-shirt, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no jeans and t-shirt. <laughs> Speaking of t-shirts, have you guys got any new merch? <laughs> because mm -hmm. I'm wearing the that 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 black shirt with the red lettering. Is I'm I've about wore it out. <laughs> you know what? The, the last thing we got was the Goliath. Um, 
Well, no, the, the uh, logo. like teal. The Jack Daniels logo? Well, the teal ones. All the ladies. Yeah, yeah, we got some long sleeve lady shirts, V-necks. Um, that was the last thing we did new. Um, but we got the Jack Daniels style uh, shirts. Um, That's what we, I, I, I was yeah, thinking about you on the way here. I should have brought you one of those, man. Well, I'm kind of teeing you up to like sell some merch. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah, if you go to 50flies.com, all our stuff's on there. Our merch store with uh, just miscellaneous items. We got tumblers and things like that on there. We have these like awesome out. bracelets that say hold my fucking beer on the back. Yeah, yeah I've got one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we've been toying with a few uh, merch ideas and stuff. I want to do hoodies and tank tops. I, I don't want to do yeah. Yeah, a lot of people want hoodies, but yeah. Should definitely have tank tops for wrist Olympics. I don't know. That might be a little soon to get tank tops, but that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be uh, You got a magician working for you. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> she can make it happen. Because this is what will happen. They're like, oh, I like this pen. It's hot out here. Yeah. Wow. I need a tank top. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I'd do it in a second. Like, especially when you've got, like, I've got a full sleeve. Yeah. yeah. Kevin likes tank tops. Yeah. 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 I do the thing where I cut the sleeves off of t-shirts. Yeah. I, I, I got I got a little bit of man boob going on, so tank tops. I don't I don't, I don't like that side view on the tank tops. So I t- <laughs> cut the sleeves off of t-shirts. None of my tank tops are flattering, but they're comfortable yeah. as hell. So I, I think this is like the first time I've ever seen you in a hoodie. To be honest, well, cold, usually probably. you're in a tank top. It's cold. It's cold this morning. Yeah, I, when I think of tank tops, I think about like real skinny dudes. Like, I always hated those guys. They got all the chicks. Yeah. yeah. I can never pull off a tank top. I'm too big. Nope. Same. <laughs> too I had to wear this hoodie because I got to plug them, dude. The new Scars hoodie is awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I got to get one. I, you know what I do like about Scars merch is they got those three-quarter length shirts. I yeah. like those a lot. Yeah. Those, are, those are dope. Um, but now we're going into, you know, the warm season. So, like, hoodies and long sleeves are – yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a while before I get hats would be cool too. Where we're, yeah. something else that's being tossed around is potentially doing some hats. Uh, you know, I want to get some more hats made, but um, I, I did an original run before we got open. Made I, I had like a hundred hats made, and what I did was I had them. I bought the the hat base and had them cross stitch the logo, like actually do the um, embroider. You know, yeah, embroider. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, did the embroidery into the hat, and the lady that that did that. During the pandemic, she closed shop and moved, moved like to another state. And now it's been a couple of years now. I've been trying to find somebody that can embroider hats. And, and, and I'm very specific with the type of hat. Like it's a company out west that, that I buy them from. And mm. so my hats are expensive because they're really high quality. Yeah. And uh, I can't find anyone that embroiders hats anymore. Oh. Our beanies are like that. So for anybody that's asked about beanies, it's they're sold out on the online stores because we can't find somebody to do it for a reasonable price that's going to be quality. The guy that yeah. made them originally... Uh, I can't locate him. Yeah, we have to look what happened to him, to be honest with you. I mean, they were great hats, too. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to compromise on quality. Like, all the new shirts yeah. and everything, it's all super quality material. You know, we want to sell the best quality merch we can. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I'm saying, like, my shirts are, are high-quality shirts and stuff. But I feel like we're this, this, I feel like we're boring people with merch talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, with your new merch, are you, have y'all, do you have any ideas about something interesting? Because what I've seen recently in a lot of merch tables is, like, that we've had bands that have had, they make candles. We have bands that have hot sauce. They like, I mean, it's like that something just weird to stand out. Yeah, I thought about like a, fly traps. <laughs> I've said that before, but yeah. Um, okay, so no, I'm confirming. I'm confirming his. <laughs> um, I've also pondered like with an idea like um, on the front of the flies logo on the back, like an American flag, but instead of stars, fifty flies. Oh, stars. Uh, yeah. nice. I've got some mock-ups in the work for that one. I wanted to do condoms. I thought 50 flies condoms would have been hilarious. Canada. Actually, that's not. I mean, that's Who that one thing. Who uses those? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, the thing is, is if you In walked general. up to a merch. No, the point is, if you walked up to a merch table, you're like, ah, yeah, you're gonna see that. And you're gonna go, I, I, I gotta get one of those because it's just funny as hell. Yeah. Especially because it has flies all right. over. Right. <laughs> that really makes somebody. Instead of, instead I mean, of ribbed, it's like little. <laughs> Just do a picture of like a uh, like a big fly and then like a little little flylets like underneath it. <laughs> Instead of Magnum, you got wasp. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's a big seller. <laughs> I saw a band do that. Uh, God, my first concert, like my first real concert, was when I was eleven. 
Uh, it was uh, like a Winnie Rose. I think it was Winnie Rose 10 at PNC. And one of the bands that opened in the park, like in the tailgate party, they sold condoms. I think they were called like Envy or something, but they sold condoms. And I was like, dude, that's, I've never <laughs> seen a band do that. that that's awesome. You ever seen the serial numbers at the end of the condom? <laughs> <laughs> never rolled it out that far. <laughs> <laughs> So who played that Winnie Rose? Do you remember? Uh, Three Doors Down headlined, uh, Alter Bridge stained, Silver Tide. Two thousand six, right? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, basically five. Five. Damn, I was so close. (laughs) I mean, that was a badass lineup for my first like real concert. I think I went in twenty twelve. It was Thirty Seconds to Mars, AWOL Nation, um, Sublime. It's hard to remember. I was like 18, 30 Seconds yeah. to Mars was at the one I was at, but it was like right before they took off. And When they were good. Yeah, they played the second stage with a band called Top of the Orange. I'll never forget that. And, mm-hmm. you know, you see them on the second stage, you're like, okay, you know, they're good, but like, you know, you don't know if you'll ever hear from them again. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, I met them for like two seconds at the show and whatever. And then, like, a month, two months later, I saw them on MTV with The Kill, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's a but that's a cool moment you'll never forget. Yeah, like yeah. I saw them before this. Yeah. yeah, I remember I went to Ozfest back in like the early two thousands, and I saw uh, Black Label Society Ooh. were playing a side stage. Yep. And at the th- at the time, I had no idea who they were. I didn't even know like I didn't know it was Zach Wild's band when I mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, man, this band's awesome, <laughs> right? And then like a couple years later, they they kind of blow up, and I've spent the rest of my adult life trying to catch them again and like something always gets in the way <laughs> every time black label society has come around something has happened to prevent me from going mm-hmm. to the show like it's, a lot of times it's been family stuff but this last time with blue ridge like i was finally going to get to see black label society <laughs> yeah. and then fucking yeah. blue ridge yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. like, yeah. It's, and it's starting to feel like one of those things like i'm going to for i'm never going to see this man forever live, chasing you know? them yeah. 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 <laughs> I saw them once before I knew who they were. I had no idea. <laughs> now it's like I know all the songs. I want to see them. That's what one and done. <laughs> who else was on that Ozfest that you were at? Uh, Disturbed, Godsmack, um, Ozzy. Uh, yeah. I, like, I, I can't remember. who. They, those were like the main ones. That... I went to several of them, and I was like, which one? But mm. I think that was the very first one I went to. It was early. It was real early 2000s. I left there looking like a lobster because my dumb ass forgot to put on sunscreen. <laughs> I would have killed I think we all did that at some Ozfest point. 99. That's yeah. like Same, that's when I was born. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, you missed out on the boat. I was six, so I mean <laughs> I was still old. Do, do you have do you 19. have <laughs> do you have like a favorite festival memory that you, you could share? Like, that sounds like something fun we could do. I mean honestly Blue Ridge, I mean, even though it was a disaster, <laughs> it was still I went with some great people, and we still made some great memories. You know, that's what my wife and I did. Like we we we, we just decided like because we, yeah, we just decided, like, well, fuck it, let's just party. Yeah. Like, like we just, you know, we went and helped helped them at the camp, you know, mm-hmm. set up and you know, re- rebuild and everything. I even donated a, a, a one of our tents. You know, I mean, we just party. Like I said, I, I'm bummed I didn't get to see Bad Omens or Same. Black Label, yeah. you know, a handful of other bands. But, um, but yeah, we made the most of it. I mean, honestly, for me, my wife and I, it's like we're not going to get to be alone away from the kids again for <laughs> right. a very long time. Like, <laughs> let's take advantage of this time. <laughs> what about you guys? You got a favorite Should festival you memory? Start? I, not really, man, because I'm not a, just not a, uh, I guess, a big festival guy, you know? Not, I'm, I'm a... I'm more this kind of festival. So it was, well, Rooster, it was Rooster Olympics. Rooster, Olympics. So Rooster Olympics. Olympics last year? That <laughs> well, was your I mean, favorite yeah, festival? Then, okay. Yeah. yeah there you go. Absolutely. Just go with that, Chip. Just go with that. <laughs> I um, mean, in terms of big festivals, though, it's just not my thing. I mean, too many people yeah. at one time. It's, it's hard for me because there's been so many, and it depends on how you look at it. Like, if I'm looking at full-on festivals – like probably one of my favorite memories was seeing Shine Down back in the day on Ooh. on the side stage. I think it was at Weenie Roast. That's uh, who else was at the one yeah. I was at Shine Down, and, and yeah. they were playing on the side stage. There seemed like a, a decent portion of the crowd kind of knew who they were, but then it was literally just I don't even know if it was six months later you started hearing them on the radio and they just blew up. So it was cool to kind of look back on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then as far as like favorite shows ever. 
I mean, one that always stands out to me, my first day of college when I moved into my dorm, um, uh, one of my buddies called me up and said, hey, Killswitch is playing at Tremont. Oh, and Killswitch yes. is like my all-time Love favorite guys. band. Yeah. Um, they're really who kind of inspired me, especially with guitar playing and stuff. He called me and said, hey, you know, there's a show at Tremont with, uh, uh, it was Killswitch, um, 36 Crazy Fists, and I can't remember who um, else. I, th- dude, I, that was a tour. Uh, Endless it? Moment was on that, wasn't it? Or yeah. Hell Yeah. Is it Endless uh, Moment or Hell Yeah? It was one of those two I bands. I can't remember. Because I saw that show of yeah. the Ziggy's in Winston. Okay. okay. I went that same, because 36 Crazy Fists I had never heard of. Yeah. They're from Alaska. Yeah. Oh, this is wild. It's a fucking band from Alaska. <laughs> wow. And like, I, to this day, I still listen to those guys, man. They, they yeah. were really good. Yeah. I mean, it was it was an incredible show. And it was, that was actually my first time getting to see Kill Switch. And it was my first experience crowd surfing and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's one that's always Yeah, that was Disarm the Descent album tour, wasn't it? That, I that, think it was before that, because it was back when uh, Howard was still in the band. Okay, um, so that would have been right before that then. Yeah, I think yeah. it was more around the time of uh, uh, the end of Heartache when that one uh, was out. But yeah, I mean, that, that one always stands out to me. Love, you got one? Yeah, yeah um, I think uh, I think it was a crew fest. I can't remember if it was Ozfest or crew fest. I remember I saw Motley Crue and Ozzy there. Um, Motley was awesome. Man. It was at uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it was at Verizon. Yeah, when it was Verizon Amphitheater over there. Uh, but I mean, as far as like one of the most memorable shows, uh, I think I was in. I guess I was in my almost in my twenties. Uh, Papa Roach, Stained, and Breaking Benjamin was like one of the Ooh, biggest, nice. the biggest that's shows I went to, it. man. And then nice. That's, Papa Roach is one thing I'll never remember. Very I'll cool. never forget seeing. I'm ready for September for Louder Than Life. Yeah. Mm. My girlfriend is the awesome. biggest Breaking Benjamin fan. If I don't take her to Breaking Benjamin, like, she might beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're a good show if you've never seen them. I've seen Breaking Benjamin, like, 15 times. Yeah, I'm just like, they're, they're, once. Yeah, they're, they're, they, you know, they, were, they were, like, they got real big in my early, mid-20s yeah. and stuff. I, I was really into it. Now it's called Dad Rock. Yeah. 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 I'm like, okay. <laughs> she got the tattoo still like awesome. on her arm. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still great. <laughs> Yeah, I saw Breaking Convention with like Three Days Grace and um, there Cedar. Like a, they did that tour like a few times. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. one of the most I, I, one of the most memorable shows I ever went to. This would have been two thousand one ish. Um, the show was um, DMX, uh, Godsmack, <laughs> and Limp Bizkit. All right, oh, <laughs> none of none of those are my favorite artists, yeah, right? Yeah. But what was cool about this particular show was. It was at the Coliseum in Charlotte, and the night before, the show in Greenville, South Carolina had been canceled, so they were honoring Greenville tickets at the Coliseum. So the Coliseum, from floor to ceiling, was fucking packed, Mm. right? So DMX does his thing, and he was always fun. I saw him a few times throughout the years, and he was always a good show. But Godsmack come out, and by the time they come out, the, the place is just packed. And we've got some really good seats. We're kind of we're not on the floor. We're kind of like the first section up. Got a real good view of the stage. And they came out, and they just they just fucking brought an energy <laughs> that I had. Ne- I mean, you know, I, I, we all love this because of the energy and the, the, the we feed off of yeah. and share yeah. at the concert stuff. And this was just elevated. Like you could just tell there was something different. They were just putting out a different energy, and everyone in the room was feeling it. And I, at one point, I was with my cousin. I, I kind of turned. We kind of turned to each other at the same time. He looked at me. He's like, "Can you feel that?" I was like, "Yes." <laughs> I like, just feel it running through your body. And and Godsmack put on one of the best live performances I've ever seen in my life. And and, and to this day, they're not my favorite band. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but I'm never going to forget that yeah. show. Yeah. And then Limp Biscuit came out and did their thing, and it, it was you know. Just Godsmack stole the show that night. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, kind of awkward shows like you don't think are going to be as fantastic as they are. I got tickets to an Alan Jackson concert one time. Oh, I bet that was Yeah? Cool. And bet was there's cool. like 30 people on stage playing, <laughs> and this man's just standing in the middle, and he's gigantic. Yeah. He plays his car. He doesn't move. He plays his guitar. Yep. Fantastic. It was an amazing show. It was yeah. wild. I and got was to like see – I've playing. seen Alan twice, yeah. and the funny thing is, you know who was oh, – the first time I saw him, you know who his opener was? They were a nobody. It was Faith Hill. Wow. And I was like, holy crap. But yeah, I wow. listen to everything. <laughs> you, got a fa- you got a favorite memory? I have, okay, so I'll, my favorite, I've been to a lot of festivals. I've been to Crew Fest, I've been to Ozfest. But there was something about the side stages of Warp Tour. 
Because oh. that I think that's what kicked in like loving local bands and stuff that you've never heard before. Did you go to the last one? I don't think so. I went to the one in Camden. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of cool. I was in New Jersey, and uh, there was a band I'd never heard of before. Apparently, they're kind of a big deal, but at the time, I'd never heard of them. They were called Don Broco. Uh-huh. Um, they were really good. I, I wasn't expecting them to be as good as they were, but they had a pit. Yeah. And it's wild, because if you ever listen to their music, they don't sound like moshing music. Yeah. But the pit was pretty good, and the singer jumped off stage and got in the pit. Well, when he got in the pit, I was like, screw it. I'm going to get in there, too. So I got in the pit and started moshing with everybody. I thought you were going to get on stage. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, somebody just fucking tackles my ass down. Like, I got hit hard. Yeah. I hit the ground, and somebody reaches up, pulls me up, and I'm like, okay, cool. So I come out of the pit, like, arm in arm with this dude, and the whole crowd parts, and I realize I'm standing next to the singer from Don Broco. I was like, dude, what the fuck is <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say my favorite go. concert, though, was seeing Nine Inch Nails. At Bro- dude, those guys like well, I say those guys, but Trent, Trent. Reznor, he is next level entertainer, dude. This, but this show, that, his shows are fucking. This phenomenal. show was this show was like extra special because there was like all of a sudden a bad thunderstorm just came over, and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna stop the show because of electrical issues, but I promise you, wait it out with us. We'll make it worth your while." He played songs that he said he would never play live anymore. So we're talking about like head like a hole. Wow. And the thing is, is that at that time it's just pouring rain. We're out there listening to Nine Inch Nails, just dancing in the fucking rain, <laughs> singing along to everything. And it was just like you said, it was that energy that everybody was in the same place. He even told yeah. the people on the lawn, come under the um, the thingy. Shade. Yeah. Uh, cover. Come over there just you know because there were lightning strikes. It was like boom, 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 boom. And the thing is, is we were. My seats were just right outside of the awning, <laughs> so we were still getting wet no matter what. Yeah. It was so much fun. We left soaked. Moral of the story, kids, buy the tickets to the show. Life is short. Yep. Yeah, right. um, yeah. Amen. You guys want to plug any more dates you got coming up? I have a great <laughs> He is the he fucking is. dad of this band, dude. Hey, you hey, go. Don't, 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 don't let him go there. I sent him those dates. I hate, I hate Bob. Is Bob is not here, but he is the Bob of Fifty yeah, Flies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got. Oh yeah, April twenty sixth in High Point. April twenty seventh in Nashville. May twenty. Uh, whoa, whoa! Be careful on some of those dates because some of those aren't announced yet. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, Fuck I'm it. not sure if anything's going to fall through. Though. Okay. <laughs> May 25th is Rooster, Rooster Olympics. Uh, June 6th is the Milestone. June 9th is Hangar 1819. June 29th, LA Tap Room. And July 11th, Hangar 1819 again. Right on. Yeah. Once again, uh, fifthflies.com. We've got the calendar, links to all the socials, merch. Yep. Buy some of their merch and come see them here at Rooster Olympics, May 25th. Oh, yeah. Anything else, guys, before we get out of here? Y'all come check out the rooster, man. Michael, Ariel, yeah, everybody's this, really yeah. good people, man. You know, they've been nothing but family to us. And, you know, any support we can give them, absolutely. If you're in Gastonia, come check them out. I was just going to say thank you, man. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you. what you yeah, guys thank you for do having for us. us. Appreciate like, that, man. Like always. It's, I love it. He said, if, if I'm able to keep this thing going till the day I die, I will die a happy man. This is yeah. what I want to do, man. This is what yeah, I want to do. Awesome. I want to help, help bands out, you know. Whether it's whether it's touring bands that need a place to stop or local bands that just want to play, you know, we, you know, this I I love this shit. You know what I'm saying? I fucking love it. So I want to keep doing it. So come to shows. Peace and love. Absolutely.